Hello everyone. Welcome back to the new session of biology standard 11th chapter 16 skeleton and movement. In the last lecture we studied about introduction structure of myosin and actin filaments and then we studied about mechanism of muscle contraction. Today we'll study the details of physiology of muscle contraction and relaxation. Uh, when the muscle is relaxed the active site remains covered with tropomyosin and troponin complex. Now due to this myosin cannot interact with active site of actin and therefore contraction cannot occur. But when an action potential comes that means uh, an impulse comes to muscle through motor and plate it spreads throughout the sarcolemma of the myofibril. The transverse tubules or T tubules of sarcoplasmic reticulum releases a large number of calcium ions into sarcoplasm. These calcium ions interact with troponin molecules. This interaction inactivates troponin tropomyosin complex and this leads to change in the structure of tropomyosin. Now due to this you will find uh, it gets detached from the active site of actin filament. Thus you can see here the active site becomes uncovered or demasking takes place. Now head of the myosin cleaves that means uh, divides the ATP that means the ATP is broken down into ADP and phosphate is released and it derives energy from this ATP by breaking it. Using this energy myosin gets attached to the uncovered active site of actin and results in the formation of actomyosin complex. The myosin heads are now tilted backwards and pull the attached actin filament inwardly. This results in contraction of the muscle fibers. Now similarly during relaxation all these events occurs in a reverse direction. That means when stimulation is terminated that means when there is no stimulus. At that time, actomyosin complex is broken down and myosin head gets detached from actin filaments. This process involves the use of ATP. At the same time, calcium ions return back. And this is also an active process that requires energy. Now, due to this, a disappearance of calcium ion, troponin tropomyosin complex is restored again that means masking takes place. This complex covers the active site of actin filament. Due to this the interaction between actin and myosin stops and the actin filaments are written back to their original position. This results in muscular relaxation. So like contraction, relaxation is also an active process. Both of these process requires ATP that is energy. Rigor mortis. Usually uh, some hours after the death of an individual, its muscles become stiff. This muscular stiffening after death is called rigor mortis. It helps in fixation of hours of death after a murder. After death, the fresh supply of ATP to muscles becomes impossible. Therefore, once 
the stored atp that means the atp which is present in the body or stored inside the body is finished the detachment of myosin from actin cannot take place this results in permanent state of contraction of the muscles and here because of this we can find that the body becomes stiff properties of muscles on electrical stimulation single muscle twitch a muscle contraction initiated by a single brief stimulation is called a single muscle twitch it occurs in three stages a latent period of no contraction a contraction period and a relaxation period summation if the muscle is stimulated before the end of the twitch it generates greater tension that is summation or you can say addition of effect takes place repeated stimuli will produce increasing strength of contraction this is also called as staircase phenomena tetanus if stimulation is very rapid and frequent the muscle does not have time to relax it remains in a state of contraction this is called tetanus refractory period immediately after one stimulus the muscle fiber cannot respond to another stimulus so this arresting period or refractory period is about 0.02 seconds threshold stimulus for a muscle fiber to contract a certain minimum strength or intensity of stimulus is required this is called threshold stimulus all or none principle a stimulus below threshold will not result in contraction a threshold stimulus will result in contraction so this contraction leads to a maximum force higher stimulus will not increase the force of contraction that is a muscle fiber either contracts fully or not at all this is all or none principle all types of muscle fibers and nerve fibers obey this law oxygen depth during strenuous exercise muscles oxygen supply rapidly becomes insufficient to maintain oxidative phosphorylation of a respiratory substrate at this stage muscles contract anaerobically and they start accumulating lactic acid which is produced by anaerobic glycolysis lactic acid produces less atp and is toxic so it causes tiredness pain and muscle cramps during recovery oxygen consumption of the muscle far exceeds than that in the resting state this extra oxygen consumed during recovery is called oxygen depth of the muscle disorders are related to bone arthritis it is an inflammation of joint it is a painful disorder of bones ligaments tendons etc in this disorder joint becomes swollen stiff and painful it can lead to disability uh, it is of three different types that is osteoarthritis gouty arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis let's start the first one osteoarthritis in this joint cartilage is degenerated it is caused by various factors like aging obesity 
muscle weakness etc this is common type of arthritis that affects normally hand knees and spine gouty arthritis or you can also ca call it as gout in this disorder joint pain occurs due to deposition of uric acid in joints if uric acid is produced in excess or if it is not excreted it accumulates in joints as sodium urate and degenerates cartilage causing inflammation and pain it generally affects joints of feet rheumatoid arthritis it is an autoimmune disorder where body's immune system attacks its own tissues in this synovial membrane swells up and starts secreting extra synovial fluid this fluid exerts pressure on joint and makes it painful membrane may develop abnormal granulation tissue uh, that is called panus panus that is the thickened area now this panus may erode cartilage uh, fibrous tissue gets ossified and may lead to stiffness in joints osteoporosis in this disorder bones become porous and hence brittle it is a mainly age related disorder and it is more common in women than in men as age advances that means as you grow up bone reabsorption outpaces bone formation hence bone lose mass and become brittle more calcium is lost in urine sweat etc than it is gained through diet osteoporosis may be caused due to a uh, decreasing estrogen secretion after menopause deficiency of vitamin d low calcium diet and a decreased secretion of sex hormones and thyrocalcitonin uh main reason uh, of this disease actually are all these things uh, but in this disease what happens more commonly is fracture uh, apart from fractures it may lead to shrinkage of vertebra height loss hunched back uh, and bone pain hunched back means the back uh, becomes a bit uh, downwards that is called hunched back uh, so here prevention of this disease is better than treatment uh, by consuming adequate amount of calcium and exercise at young age this is the only way you can cope up with osteoporosis so let's take a quick revision what we have studied today uh, today we studied about a uh, physiology of muscle contraction and relaxation then we studied about rigor mortis then properties of muscles on electrical stimulation and then we studied about disorders related to bone i hope you understood the topic we have completed this chapter we'll meet again in the next video lecture with new chapters till then take good care of yourselves thank you